behalf of government of india and phd chamber of commerce and industry i welcome you all for this webinar on how do packaging uh, solution enhance profitability for toy industry so as we all are aware the government of india is organizing the india toy fair 2021 on a virtual platform this toy fair is in line with the honorable prime minister's vision of making india a global sourcing hub for the toy industry the fair shall provide an impetus to the underlining themes of aatmanirbhar bharat and get vocal for local campaigns launched by the government to promote indigenous industries the india toy fair will also have knowledge sessions in terms of engaging panel discussion and webinars on diverse topics resonating with the indian toy industry to make the fair an all encompassing event a plethora of activities such as craft dis demonstrations competitions quizzes virtual tours products launches etc which are being held concurrently during this fair so phd chamber of commerce and industry is proud to be associated with the important initiative of government of india as is and is anchoring today's session on how do packaging solutions enhance profitability for toy industry see packaging plays a significant role in increasing profitability in toy industry the session will explore various standards good practices and options on packaging solutions available in domestic as well as indian market so we have our three esteemed panelists with us today dr jayant rai choudhury the deputy director general of standardization from bureau of indian standards welcome to you sir dr tanveer alam the director of indian institute of packaging thank you very much for joining today sir thank you priti sita raman director kpmg thank you very much ma'am for sparing your time so to start this session i would like to invite dr tanveer alam the director of indian institute of packaging to share his views with us thank you namit sir and uh, we feel uh, it is our privilege uh, especially uh, for the toy sector uh, we can refer to the 68th edition of uh, man ki baat which was held on 30th august when prime minister talked about the toys after that ip uh, ministry has advised me to ip how we can work for the toy sector and ip packaging will take a, a lead in this sector after that we have done many more work what i will share before you okay, we have developed some packaging standard and specifications for the different toy sector and after that we have also uh, uh, done a training program for last uh, three months a uh, new center we have established in varanasi and uh, especially we are doing the training for the this artisans and exporters and uh, entrepreneurs involved for the especially for, for toys industry four training program already we have organized more than 10 15 packaging standards and new design we have developed so far so this is the what we can say that the outcome of recent our concern about the uh, promotion of this toys through the packaging so now i would like to share my the packaging how the innovative packaging solution for the toys industry as all you aware about next um, you can show the next slide how the important of the packaging the packaging all you aware about that is the science art and technology of in enclosing or protecting the product for the distribution storage sale and use packaging can be described as a coordinated system of preparing goods for transport warehouse logistic sale and end use so therefore when the production ends the packaging is starts the packaging plays a major role including the, uh, all segment including the, the this toy segment the function of the packaging we can say the basic function and now the we consider the packaging is tool for marketing packaging is a silent salesman so so if you want to catch the international market and as well as the huge potential of indian market we need a good packaging to protect our product preserve our product and uh, for the good transportation packaging is important what i would like to mention about that next So according to so we have done some review okay, how the packaging sector is currently working the according to the uh, recent industry association report says that more than 50.5 billion market us of indian packaging sector which is growing at a rate of 15 to 18% when we talk about the global packaging industry more than 975 billion of the and which is growing at a rate of 4 to 5% 
And Asia Pacific region is the third largest packaging market, which is growing at the rate of five to six percent. Next. So now you can see the share of the global packaging market based on the geographical distribution. So we have a huge potential of Asia Pacific region, which is, has a share more than 38%. Next slide, please. The role of packaging, how important packaging for branding of the toys. Innovative packaging design and solution that not only help the product stand out above the rest of the uh, product increasing, also increase the product's growth and success but it also provides more sustainable and cost-effective solution for the lifespan of the package from warehouse and the assembly line to store uh, during the sales and customer hands. So the effective, the packaging as effective tool of marketing, what I mentioned about that, a product marketing strategy can rely heavily on the product's packaging as the package, package sends a message that conveys the style, purpose, values. At the point of the sale, a packaging design must catch to the customer's eye which attract with the customer. In a fraction of mi uh, minutes, it uh, affect the decision-making purchasing out to the products, giving the customers reason to pick up the package uh, and make the purchase. So the, next. So role of the packaging for the branding of the toys. Packaging material selection is very important. Regardless of the design, selection of the packaging material is critical to the stability and compatibility of the product with the package solution. Matter selection must also meet the operational guidelines, including the distribution requirement, testing protocol, vendor requirement, as well as commercial goals, such as targeted cost of the toys, timeline and brand requirement. What I would like to mention about that, the, when we talk about the different packaging, there are the different packaging material used for the uh, packaging industry. It may be the paper-based packaging, the plastic-based packaging, it is the metal packaging and the glass packaging. So various types of the packaging material is used for the pack of the trials industry and of course, not only the this uh, <clears throat> packaging uh, is also important for the warehouse and shelf life of the product and now the packaging is full fledged science and advanced subject we can say we need skill manpower uh, is to fulfill the requirement of the packaging for branding and value addition of the product of the trials industry next the Indian toys industry, I hope you all your area, I'm not going to touch about that. The more than the, this is the, these are the figures of the Indian toys industry. Currently, the retail value of the Indian market is approximately more than 17,000 crore. We, of these 75 persons are import from the China. The retail value of our domestic production is uh, only about 6,000 crore and is primarily from the manufacturing in which 75% uh, comes from the macro industries. 22% from the MSME and 3% of the uh, organized and large units. India imports twice from worth more than 1.4 billion, 10,000 crores. And almost 85% of the twice sold in India are imported, with China being the top source, followed by the Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Germany, Hong Kong, and US. Next. The Indian toys industry, India is the second largest populated country in the world. So there is India has about 50% of the total population is under 25 years age. Purchasing power of the people is increasing day by day. Thus, better scope for adding new customer. There is a huge market for the toys within the country, which needs can be tapped. Next. <clears throat> the innovative packaging solution for the toy industry. Next. So how... The way, why we need innovative packaging solution for the toy. We, we understand that we are having competition in the international market. Our 50% toys market is captured by the other countries. Thus packaging can be used as a tool for marketing and branding of the Indian toys industry. India, not only the, for exporting, India, Indian market itself is a big market. Let us discuss how packaging can be used effectively for the growth of Indian packaging sector. Next. So innovative function of the good packaging. Packaging provides protection from the physical damage. Now you can see how the poor packaging can cause the damage of the, the toys. Because the package, when the product is being transported during the logistic, logistic chain, it faces the different vibration impact and scratches. These are the damages caused. So then the innovative, with the help of good, good uh, innovative packaging, we can protect from this uh, damages. Then, then possible innovation solutions. 
uh, we can protect from the we can have a packaging which must be uh, resistant against the scratches innovative films innovative cushioning material is required all required are uh, engineering based material engineering based uh, the engineering uh, engineering is involved to develop a protective packaging what type of the right type of the floating media what should be the strength how we can provide the cushioning so that our uh, the tires can uh, cannot be damaged further these are the different innovative material can be used to make a protective and cushioning material like bubble films foam and separators these are the innovations of innovations are required in the field of the uh, packaging to uh, to improve the damage uh, to protect the damage during the transportations and the study says more than 50% of the damage occurs during the transportation due to the poor packaging so another innovations for the good packaging required we want to protect the our tires from the dust moisture because if moisture will be higher there will be the fungal growth that then also the printing is important do if we have to protect from the light because the light with the time there is they are causing the uv light causing the friend diminishing of the color and shrinkage and cracking do so need innovative packaging so that protect from the light dust and heat so that we can maintain the freshness of the packaging or packaging material and printing the possible another factors we have to take care of is that the, our packaging material now should be moisture absorbent the sh should protect from the moisture so that it cannot affect our the twice because twice may be the different materials maybe the wood material paper based material and other uh, materials so that moisture is important critical factor to control and with the help of the good packaging we can protect against the moisture and now the this for example the anti fungal fungal is another factor which is growing if a product is natural so we have a packaging material now we can protect against the fungal uv addition we can incorporate some uv additives to protect from the light and now another important is temperature so temperature is also determinant factor when the humid climate is there then there is a chances for deterioration will be high so so we have a uh, now the in, uh, active packaging is there so we can control we can control the uh, temperature uh, and in and uh, with the help of a temperature indicator we can monitor the storage condition of the uh, the product and packages next the, the these are the uh, another when we talk about this was the basic function of the packaging what i have discussed now i would like to discuss about the consumer point of view what the consumer wants uh, from the product from the packaging so that convenience is important factors so whatever the packaging we have to develop innovative packaging must be convenient in handling comfort to the storage and easy and must be reusable these are the innovation considered for good packaging systems so then finally we can summarize that the possible innovations uh, of good packaging must provide handling slot for the transport pack here the two different types of the packaging i would like to mention few things one is consumer packaging another is transport packaging and uh, and uh, uh, secondary packaging and uh, what i have discussed about the cushioning and protection packaging so each and every level of the packaging is equally important we have to consider to, so that the possible innovations required is that provide a handling slot for the good uh, transportation pack and then stability when we have to put a product on a sl and shelf the product tire must be stable so that thing center of gravity for the product these are the design consideration when we being a packaging expert packaging design has to consider for innovation of this factors so that mm, the packaging will be more stable on the sl and transportation and another use of a size size of the packaging because when we design a packaging we have to uh, we need uh, to find out the what are the characteristics what are the dimensions what are the parameters to be considered for good packaging so, so we have to have optimized because cost is important factor we can rather we consider as the uh, <clears throat> cost is more important factors so you have to have uh, optimize the packaging so that it should be cost effective packaging use mechanical devices for loading so we know that we doing the transportation cost is 
major factor logistic packaging so so now we have a system the innovation should be keeping in mind that uh, unitization uh, should be in a such way optimization of the packaging should be in such way day, way that it is easy for the unitization during the uh, logistic next so innovation fraction of good packaging provides filter. another factor is also important for the packaging innovation is that your packaging must be pilfer proof some of the innovation good tape good uh, uh, systems good sealing is important when the when the seal is cut the diagonal lines make it difficult to realign the seam of the package these are the consideration to for the pilfer proof packaging next though the sum of the uh, indian twas you can see different types of the uh, as available in the indian market next Now you can see another different category, how wooden toys in Indian market. Next. So Indian toy sector, we can define, classify, we have uh, the soft toys industries, tall category, electronic toys, wooden toys, based on the games, and some technical toys kids, uh, and kids. So these are the different, what we have summarized, the different category of the toys are there in the market. Next. Next. So now what the IP has done, we have done a research for last three months. We, are, we have done some research. We have classified different, we have categorized the different types of the uh, twice industry. We have done a research work and the category of the soft twice, these are the soft twice categories. These are the packaging we have developed scientifically. When we talk about the design of the packaging, two things is very important. I have discussed about the functional de design of the packaging. It means you need some certain strength to protect a product, preserve and storage, self light. These are the basic and functional requirement. Another important is that the design part. So these are the innovative design, graphics, ergonomics. These are the aesthetically because it is very much important when the customer to attract the customer appeal, we should have a good aesthetic design. So both are important, functional design of the packaging and as well as aesthetic design of the packaging. Keeping in mind, we have developed our packaging specifications, standards, so that customer can follow. Uh, and by the same time, that we have focused on aesthetic design so that it can attract to the customer. So these are the few packaging design we have developed. Next. You can see, these are the left-hand side. You can see this, these are the specifications. And, uh, and finally, primary packaging design uh, primary package design for the twice, secondary package design, finally transport packaging and palletization. Whole package we have developed model, so that one side we have a good packaging, customized packaging, optimized packaging, cost-effective packaging, and ultimately it how the it will help uh, for the transportation without damaging. This is the whole package we have developed. One category soft twice. Next. This is the another package you can see how attractive package design we have developed. These are the design how the product will uh, appear on the SL. This is the right hand side you can see on the screen. This is the specification so that uh, the customer will be aware the key how they can prepare a good packaging and as well as the manufacturer key how they will make a good packaging. This whole uh, package we have developed for the doll category. So we have taken one one product from the different category. This is the doll category. Next, this you can see the another category of uh, electronic toys. How attractive uh, the one electronic product we have taken. We have developed primary packaging. We have also uh, uh, developed a specification for it, this and how it will appear on a uh, shelf in the retail market. Next, this you can see beautiful packaging we have developed. Develop and this we have already uh, inaugurated by the um, uh, the minister in the uh, Varanasi during the launch. We have first program we have launched in the Varanasi for the twice training program in the uh, fourth fourth January. The wooden twice games. This is the one of the what we can say most potential area where we have developed this packaging. This packaging considering the sustainable, eco friendly packaging, cost effective packaging, so that uh, it will uh, improve the branding of our Indian toys industry. Next. So this is the another value addition area we have done a small, uh, the 
this packaging also we have uh, improvised it is not we can say like a complete development we have done but jo, we have done a market study we have uh, taken the sample of the market we have uh, studied what is the present packaging and we have improvised the concept is the same but we have improvised improvised the packaging of the market the trash without the package has lit or no value so use best possible packaging material and design this is our uh, motto next so value addition another improvisation we have done you can see like different color combinations and uh, multiple uh, uh, twice component put together so we can say like combo type of the packaging we have developed so next so use distinct tailored shapes styles for unit package to attract the most customer this is the required for the value addition of the packaging you can see these are available in the market but we need to improvise and we have to develop a uh, standards specification the so that the small uh, twaz manufacturer can directly they can adopt and sell the, their product in good packaging in the market next so some uh, we, we can summarize innovative suggestion use of easily available materials what we can say like ke we are also focusing the we have to develop a packaging must be all what we have our prime minister's mission is local for vocal we have to develop alternative packaging based on the natural resources locally available materials and develop a packaging so that it will minimize the cost and as well as easy availability will be there so these are the another focus for innovations we are focusing in that area and another important compliance is use of food grade packaging material and colors so now the bis uh, i know that dg will discuss about the what are the latest compliances for the uh, uh, twaz industry so it is also important the compliances must reflect on the packaging in the form of the uh, labeling the use of natural now another important uh, uh, requirement of the market is that whatever the packaging you use must be natural and biodegradable so we are because sometimes we required to see through you know ki what jo bikta hai wo dikhta hai so we have to give up because the plastic is transparent so now na chahke ki we have to have arrangement for the plastics see through arrangement now we are looking ki whether the plastic must be a biodegradable plastics so we are also uh giving that option ki whatever the plastic you are using must be a biodegradable eco friendly so that is also focus area for innovation next and of course design is important use innovative sustainable de uh, design for more attraction appealing to the customer increase the value increase the market and the value addition with packaging more sale less damage and increase the profit is the mantra of innovative solution for the twaz industry and of course stand and regulations we i think so there is we don't have any packaging regulations especially for the twaz industry we need to have a comprehensive standards and regulations regarding for the twaz industry so that the so uniformity harmonization uh, uh, for the twaz industry next so these are the different uh, pulp board container corrugated fiber board Wind, window cutting so so okay, to avoid this plastics we want to have a, a window cut system so that customer can see from outside now another area of alternative packaging is that the pulp molded trays we can have from the natural resources uh, agro waste materials and we can have a good uh, so that it can provide uh, we can eliminate thermoforming uh, a plastic tray uh, and have alternative a uh, natural agro based pulp based molded tray for, as a packaging materials for value addition to the twaz industry next so, so some solid board tube brand, uh, uh, handling now the another area it is again paper based it is a uh, premium tech category of the packaging easy uh, convenient for handling and storage next more innovations you can see a paper based and a uh, uh, monocarton based 
with multiple uh, 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 component of the twice can be put together and easy to handling. Now you can see this type of the packaging for value addition for the twice industry. Next. We can have also combination with the storage scanner, hanger tools, hanger holes so that it can uh, uh, comfort to holding the products next during the carrying display window. So earlier packaging, what I could not due to the constant of the time, we could not see these are the packaging we have developed. This is also uh, available in the market, but and whatever the packaging must be uniqueness. The so focus is there okay, when we have to focus on the innovation in packaging, it must be uniqueness so that it can differentiate brand value of our product from the China and other countries. Next. Now, what I would like to say here, okay, this and training program, these are the training programs already we have already organized last three months for especially keeping in mind to the clusters. We have done a training on Varanasi, we have done a training on the Tried cluster of the Chitrakoot. So you can say that how IP is concerned for the packaging development as well as the ultimately who will ultimate user. We are also uh, uh, giving the training to the ultimate user of the twice industry so that they can use a better packaging for their uh, branding of the product for value addition of the product. Next. So what IP can serve? Way forward and roll of IP. What IP is, can do? IP can develop standard and specification of export as well as domestic packaging, as I have discussed in a phase manner, what we are taking and working and design and develop a packaging for the selected indigenous to us. And we have best testing facility in the country so that quality can be monitored. And of course, we have also started the training and next phase we'll also uh, continuous uh, program will do the training programs to train the packaging to compliance with the regulation as well as and finally improving and optimize the packaging material used in warehousing uh, to minimize the logistic cost thank you very much giving this opportunity Thank you very much, Dr. Alam, for sharing your uh, detailed uh, presentation. I would say, I think you have touched most of the points in this. And as you rightly said, jo dikta hai, wo bikta hai. Yeah. I think the toy sector has a very good potential now. And as per the impetus given by the government and our honorable prime minister, we all need to work together for the development of this. And I think the training programs and workshops, which we have already started and going to the clusters, I think that is what is very much required because a lot of hand holding is required in that. So there, I think we all can work together. IIP, BIS, KPMG, and PhD chamber would like to work together on that part and go to the clusters and try to train the people and tell them that how they can enhance their packaging into this to make it more attractive. So once again, thank you very much, Dr. Alam, for your presentation. So now to take this further, I would like to invite Ms. Preeti Sitaraman, the director of KPMG, to share her views on how packaging solution enhance profitability for dry industry. Ms. Preeti, please. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful detailed uh, presentation that covered the entire gamut of the packaging space. And uh, can't agree more with the, you know, the points that were asked. I would just like to reiterate a few more. And this segment and this sector is a bit more closer to me because me as a parent, I, I'm a mother of a four-year-old toddler. And I can relate to uh, most of the concerns that come from a parent uh, perspective also. And uh, the points that uh, come to me, and when you talk about profitability, yeah, about, uh, you know, for companies, the first thing that comes to us, what does packaging actually do? So you see, packaging takes the conceptual idea of the brand, that's the toy. And, you know, it's that has been developed, you can market it through your print, etc. that's there. And it gives it in a very, you know, packaged well, uh, you could say a consumer facing product that comes through. It's delivered in that format. Now, when you look at this toy segment, brand loyalty is becoming a big issue, apparently, because kids want variety. They get bored in, in terms. And, and therefore, it's more crucial now in, in terms of, you know, 
for companies to make the front panel. You, you've seen so many, you know, cases that have been displaced by the varieties. Yeah. It can be transparent, it can be opaque, uh, innovative ideas coming in. And therefore, this front panel arguably, arguably will be the most valuable marketing real estate that a brand can actually ask for or own. You know, it's, it's in some space. So another interesting point is that for kids, when you talk about kids, the visual brand communication that's there, it outweighs the verbal part. So making sure that the proper cues are in place leads to immediate recognition and an emotional response. I've seen this personally. Many times you see the colors, uh, the way a particular product is displayed in terms. And therefore that leads to it. However, if you look at it from a parental part, now for parents, they look at, I, I would say, a right combination of your verbal cues as well as, you know, you would say the trust part, you know, in terms of what is the quality of the product, the messaging, the design, the various other aspects that come into it. So, and therefore, when you talk about, so even in terms of biodegrade, sustainability, you know, are you, what kind of products are used, the age factor, a lot of those things that go into it, in terms of that actually lead to a purchase from a parental perspective. Now, from a corporate perspective, when you look at from a producer's perspective, that was from a consumer side in, in terms. Now, from a production side, a manufacturer has to think of multiple aspects of retail processes that have been already talked about in detail. Look at, you, you see, there was a survey that was conducted and various manufacturing units, you know, they've adopted different types of packaging, you know. And all of this, those who were surveyed, over about 50, 55% were using the local material. And then you had the standard, uh, you know, the cardboard packaging that was done by, say, about 25 odd units and close to about, just about 20%. We're using designer packaging. So those are more on the higher, and those definitely commanded a higher premium in terms of attraction of toys. Uh, we saw in the earlier presentation also a simple doll, but if it's packaged well, rightly is, is what values. Another inter interesting aspect that is comes to our mind is of course the costing part. How do I get the right message, the right design, the right elements, the quality? Ensure that it is sustainable use of natural products. It's you know compliant with regulations. You know in terms of it's safe because we are talking about kids here, so it's safe for kids. How do we look at that? So therefore, and at the right price because again the pricing of toys is a very very sensitive thing here in terms because we say it's children get bored very fast in terms the longevity of the toys is very you know, low and. In terms of packaging, a new area that has come in is green packaging. So we globally, of course, this has become, you know, uh, having sustainable solutions is more of a rule than a norm, both for the producers as, as well as the end users. You, you see this very prevalent abroad. Now, to have a cost-effective solution provides you both, you know, the environmental impact that is a minimum that is there. And you're seeing brands also promoting it as to we need to have work together along with the government, along with the consumer to drive this path of sustainability in terms, because we see a lot of landfills with a lot of plastic that's there. How do we use those? These are interesting things that are coming in. So I keep reiterating this point in terms of when we talk about green packaging, we have the normal three R's, you know, we generally talk about, we've been taught in school as well, reduce, reuse, recycle. I add to it additionally, can we reconsume? and recirculate this in terms. So this basically, like I mentioned, how do we have these, how do we adopt innovative, imaginative solutions like biodegradable packaging, recycle packaging, you look at, those become interesting discussion points as well. And in some cases, yes, it is cost, it, it brings down the cost or the larger, yes. In some cases, because the kind of material that you want to use may drive up your cost, but it's at a, if you're leaving a better environment for your kids. So when you look at that, the pros and cons, you definitely always find this a better option here. So that's the change that we would like to also work towards in terms. And uh, another important aspect is 
the, the logistics part. Now, you know, uh, this is a, when we look at, uh, and this is coming from a mother here, essentially, the, the preconceived notion, you know, the bigger the box, when you go to a birthday party, you know, they, they have a conceived value that comes in. Seeing that, oh, the boy who gets the biggest birthday box uh, gift prize is, is the person who, you know, oh, that's a fantastic gift. No matter what's there inside, what quality. So that's again a perception that needs to change gradually. So that again leads to shelf space, logistics cost. How do I do those in terms? That again adds to my cost in terms. So there are multiple ways. And like it was discussed earlier, we need to look at how, how do we balance the, you know, in terms of getting the right product at the right cost. Because when you look at even paper, the packaging material itself, a lot of it is available locally. Some, in some cases, in some, you know, for some kind of special, you, you need to import a few things, but broadly available locally. We need to look at how do we balance that in terms of getting, can I get five products in that, can I, in that shelf space? So pricing for the right price, how do I get a fantastic product? Can I get the innovative design element coming into it? Uh, can I attract it through, because when you're looking at e-commerce, it's just looking at the product on the side. Can I look at the latest technology that will give me superior finish and finish on the cover? Because when it's children, the ink, the color, the, the way they their sensory organs work is very different from the adults. So can we get a balance of all this to ensure that we, we get fantastic product? And I think when you get all these ingredients together, then I think the product is uh, definitely proves to be profitable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Preetiji. I think the point I would like to repeat again, that there is a huge potential which we all can see. And a proper awareness has to be made now to the industry because the industry is there in the deep, I would say, uh, cluster. So we have to reach to them and uh, teach them and handhold them. Like as you rightly pointed out, it has to be cost effective sustainable packaging, biodegradable packaging, logistics, everything has to be there. And I think we have Dr. Alam, we have Mr. Chaudhary ji there in this. So we all have to join hands together and work on that part. So definitely I see a huge potential into this. And for sure this goes with the motto of the Prime Minister, get vocal for local. So that will be definitely helping that agenda also and the Atmanirbhar Bharat for sure. So I think thank you very much, Preeti ji, once again for sharing your views. So now I would like to invite Shri Jayant Rai Chaudhary ji, who is the Deputy Director General of Standardization from the Bureau of Indian Standard, to uh, share his views and tell us more about on the standardization in the toy sector. Uh, thank you, Mr. Naveen, sir. Uh, uh, at the outset, uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, PhD Chamber of Commerce for uh, giving BIS and me this opportunity uh, to, to talk uh, something about uh, uh, plastic packaging and the role of standards uh, uh, that uh, uh, the role that standards would play in this context. Uh, well, uh, as has been mentioned uh, by the previous uh, presenters, uh, that uh, toys are very unique uh, in the sense that uh, uh, possibly uh, the decision of uh, purchasing a toy uh, lies to a large extent with a child who, who doesn't have uh, who doesn't have the, the acumen or the wherewithal uh, to make such a decision, but uh, still decides on, 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 uh, on what to procure or what to purchase. And there I think uh, the packaging, uh, apart from uh, uh, the usual uh, sense uh, in which a packaging is uh, used or, or the purpose uh, is, is uh, understood, that is for preservation and protection of a product, I think uh, uh, the, the, the stress lies here on the fact that packaging uh, has to be a tool, apart from uh, sort of fulfilling the functional requirement, has to play a huge role in marketing, which was obviously mentioned by uh, Mr. Alam in his uh, initial uh, talk. Uh, so, so here I think uh, uh, what the packaging uh, would play in, the, in, in terms of attracting, uh, attracting the customer, um, namely the child, in, in procuring uh, uh, a particular item. Uh, so uh, can I have the next slide, please? Uh, so, so if you are looking into, into various types of uh, packaging and, and uh, uh, packaging options, I think the first thing uh, that we need to realize is that the packaging has to be bright, it has to be attractive, uh, so that we can capture the attention of the child. Uh, 
And therefore, uh, if you look into the various types of packaging uh, uh, which are available for, for purpose of toys, you have various materials which are used. And, and here are some of the uh, highlights uh, that I have made here that uh, you have uh, toys which are packed in plastics and then in cardboard boxes and then cardboard boxes uh, with windows, uh, as has been repeatedly mentioned, because uh, there you get that uh, uh, possibility of uh, making that visual impact. And, and of course, apart from that, you need possibly to also deal with the components of toys which needs to be packed uh, within the basic toy. So, so there, are, there, are, there are different options uh, which you have to look into. But when we are talking of toys packaging, what are we uh, trying to look at? Uh, we need to see. Uh, slide, please. First and foremost, material has to be child safe. That is our prime concern because we are dealing with uh, the children uh, about anything else. Uh, secondly, uh, going along with any other packaging material, it has to be hygienic, the material that we use. It has to be durable because it has to sustain the purpose. Uh, when I'm talking of protection and preservation, uh, it has to be durable, it has to be sustainable. And we are all concerned with uh, the environmental impacts. And so it has to be eco-friendly. And again, uh, we have heard how, how we need to focus on biodegradable materials or uh, recycled materials, so it has to be uh, eco-friendly. And as I mentioned earlier, it obviously has to be attractive. And so the, the packaging solutions or the materials which we use need to cater to each and every of all the above uh, points which I have mentioned here. So next. So if you're talking in the properties or the packaging materials that uh, we are uh, uh, sort of uh, trying to look at. Uh, one, it has to be uh, inert in terms of the chemical impact or chemically inert. Uh, we need to make it proof from being damaged due to moisture. Not only the packaging material, but the contents of the package. It should withstand the strength, so it has to be tear proof. The material use uh, should have, uh, I mean, should be within the limits of toxicity, not only the materials. Uh, in the packaging, but obviously the uh, material, the inks and all uh, which we use to, to, to sort of print or uh, 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 whereby we are trying to have that visual impact, the toxicity of the materials and the inks have to be uh, ensured. We have to ensure environmentally uh, friendly materials. And uh, in, in totality, uh, the, the package itself has to be safe and not harmful to kids. What I mean is that the package itself could possibly hurt a kid. So, so we have to be careful on that also. Apart from, the, uh, apart from the toy itself, the package itself also has to be safe. Next slide, please. So what are the options uh, that we are looking at? We are looking at toys uh, uh, packaged in plastic boxes. We are uh, looking at toys uh, packaged in paper boards or cardboard boxes or in craft boxes, depending on the flexibility of the packaging that we are trying to uh, have. Corrugated boxes, uh, uh, possibly, uh, which would be the secondary or the tertiary level of packaging, uh, uh, which would uh, help us in the logistics and the distribution. Uh, chipboard packaging, wooden boxes. There are a lot of toys nowadays which come in wooden boxes. They are more durable and where we need the strength uh, and, uh, and the, uh, the, the preservation part. Uh, uh, in some cases, we need to have wooden boxes. And obviously, cloth bags. Uh, we find many toys uh, which may be packaged in paperboard or cardboard boxes, but inside, certain components may be packed in, uh, in, in cloth bags. So, uh, cloth could be another material that we are looking at. Uh, so, if we are talking in terms of uh, specifying the requirements, uh, which I have highlighted earlier, that it should be safe, it should be environment friendly, uh, so on and so forth, uh, you obviously look at how do you address this in terms of uh, the requirements. And once you uh, try to identify the requirements, you look for what could be the standards which needs to be complied with. Uh, so now, uh, at present, uh, we have a lot of uh, standards on packaging materials, but if you talk of uh, a separate standard on packages for toys, we are yet to have that. And I think that is what we are looking at and, and how do we go forward with that. So as of now, we don't have it. The need had not been felt, but possibly in the coming years, uh, when I summarize, I'll tell you that uh, we, we possibly will have to look into that. Next slide, please. So if you look at the various materials uh, that are available, plastic in the first place, uh, why is it used as a packaging material in the case of toys? One, it is durable. The transparently the transparent because it gives us the flexibility uh, of, of uh, inducing that uh, visual appeal. Uh, make the uh, product visible. 
uh, easy to handle, uh, good protection in transportation, plastic being a, a sort of a flexible material, uh, it is able to sort of sustain uh, a load. Uh, plastic is reusable, so, so uh, possibly we can uh, uh, sort of again uh, reuse the plastic uh, from the waste. It is lightweight, so logistically it helps us. Uh, it, it, it can also become a part of the toy uh, to the kids. And, and it, the plastic offers us that, uh, that, that option of having more innovative practices. Uh, uh, as uh, some of the examples which were uh, highlighted by Mr. Alam of, of uh, certain innovative packages uh, which we were looking at, many of these had uh, plastic in built there uh, in, the, in the main uh, uh, packaging uh, because it could help you in, in, in sort of innovation. Next slide, please. So if you look at the other uh, materials like cardboard boxes, uh, this uh, is one of the most favorable uh, uh, packaging material in the case of toys, uh, primarily because it can be shaped uh, very easily. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, uh, it, it provides you that, uh, that option uh, of, of, uh, of variance or variety. The craft boxes, again, uh, is a very flexible and sturdy material. Uh, and it is suitable for uh, for uh, sort of packaging very small items to very robust and heavy products. And again, uh, as in case of cardboard boxes, since it is paper based, it, it provides you that uh, that uh, option of molding into different sizes and shapes. Next. Uh, corrugated boxes, of course, uh, largely used uh, uh, when you require uh, uh, sort of uh, strength as your primary factor uh, in determining the material which is to be used. So if the toy is very heavy, you need to have cardboard boxes, um, uh, I mean, purely uh, from the strength point of view. Uh, and and uh, it is used, as I mentioned, in shipping as a secondary packaging uh, so that it helps you in transportation and prevents from damages. Next slide, please. So if you look at various standards uh, that are available for, uh, for packaging, uh, which are obviously used for toy packaging also, we have uh, uh, craft paper for packing and wrapping. Uh, so so uh, this is basically, though it is not a material uh, uh, in which it is uh, packed uh, or a packaging material per se, but it is often used for wrapping uh, of toys. So, so craft paper is one. And, uh, uh, and uh, you have uh, different uh, uh, material inputs which uh, goes into manufacturing of uh, craft paper. So, so you have a variety of options, variety of grades of paper which is available to suit your uh, requirements. And some of, the, uh, some of the aspects of the requirements uh, uh, that this standard highlights is, uh, is uh, properties like uh, the moisture content, uh, the burst index or the, or the tear index. So indicating the strength parameters, uh, the, the folding endurance and so on and so forth, uh, that gives you that uh, flexibility. Uh, apart from uh, certain limits of contaminants, and we, when we are talking of contaminants, uh, we are talking of maybe mercury, we are talking of cadmium, we are talking of lead. And these are very important factors uh, uh, when, when the child safety is concerned. So as a packaging material, you need to be very conscious of these uh, sort of requirements. Uh, the next standard we have is on folding box uh, board, uh, uh, uncoated. Uh, we also have uh, folding uh, uh, box uh, coated uh, materials. Uh, so, so again, uh, uh, these are sound and suitable for taking uh, good uh, multicolored uh, printing. And again, you have uh, properties like burst index or ash content, uh, cop test, uh, which is a reflection of the, uh, the, the water absorption uh, properties uh, of the material. Uh, the brightness, the stiffness, uh, and the smoothness of the paper, all these have been specified uh, in, in, in the folding box board uh, standards. And these, these are all very important uh, parameters on which a packaging material is, uh, is uh, decided upon. Uh, the next standard is on millboard, greyboard, and stockboard. Uh, of course, uh, largely greyboard is used in, in, in toys packaging. Uh, and uh, again, uh, similar to others, uh, uh, other boards or other paper material, you have uh, parameters which define the, the limits of moisture content, the strength, uh, and of course, uh, the limits of contaminants, which I mentioned. Uh, the folding block, uh, the folding board uh, box boards, uh, uh, which is for general consumer product packaging, can also be used for uh, toy packaging. Uh, IS uh, 16984, uh, and and uh, the, this is again uh, a, a very uh, uh, I mean uh, a strong and durable material and and a flexible material uh, 
uh, also. So, so you have uh, different uh, uh, different properties defined uh, that that would uh, sort of fulfill uh, some of the requirements uh, with respect to packaging. Uh, IS one six nine eight three on solid bleach uh, sulfate board or. Uh, IX16985, which is on coated duplex board, uh, and duplex boards are multi-layered uh, packagings. So, uh, so obviously we are looking at strength. Where we need more strength, uh, we sort of use uh, this uh, these sort of materials. And then we have the corrugated fiberboard boxes, uh, which again I mentioned uh, could be used when we are having heavy uh, weight uh, items or in secondary packaging. Uh, and so, uh, the standard IS13228 uh, is there, uh, which. Uh, uh, which will provide you uh, uh, with, the, with the relevant uh, properties that would help you in deciding. Uh, we also have composite container for dry products. This is basically uh, for the use uh, largely in the, in the food packaging, but then uh, this can also be, uh, the scope can be enlarged uh, to include uh, toy packaging also. Next slide. Uh, we will now look into some of the polythene materials uh, that are available, uh, and, and we have the polythene containers, uh, we have the polythene bags, and we have uh, the polythene or the high density polythene films, uh, which can be used uh, apart from the polythene air bubble film, uh, which could be used as a, a supporting packaging material where we need to uh, sort of uh, preserve the material uh, from being damaged. Uh, where, the, where the toy is a bit delicate and needs careful handling. Uh, so, so all these plastic materials and, and the common plastic uh, uh, properties uh, defined through milk flow rate or ash content or its density, the tensile and elongation being the mechanical properties are all uh, part of these standards. And if you look into uh, plastic uh, uh, packaging per se, uh, some of the toy specifications also define certain uh, plastic limits. We have the uh, toy specification on safety of toys, IS uh, 9873 part one. Uh, so so there, uh, plastic film or plastic bags in packaging of toys, uh, certain properties have been defined there, uh, largely in terms of uh, thickness of the material to be used and wherever perforations are there, uh, defining the limits of perforations. So, so so uh, you you also find uh, certain packaging requirements uh, embedded in the in the toy standards. Uh, so so these are some of the standards uh, that we have looked into. Uh, next slide. Uh, and and uh, if you look at the properties uh, which I have highlighted, uh, we can distribute them into two parts. One is the paper and the board packaging. Uh, and and as I had mentioned, these are some of the properties. Uh, uh, which, which largely get addressed uh, in terms of uh, the strength that is required, the durability that is required. And uh, lastly, uh, the, the limits of contaminants then uh, provides you a product uh, which is safe. Next slide. Uh, and, uh, with respect to plastic packaging, it is largely in terms of the performance because plastic uh, has a tendency uh, to, be a, uh, to be a relatively weaker material in terms of strength. So, so you have uh, different tests uh, which, which sort of uh, defines uh, that you at least have a material of the required strength to handle the, uh, the, the, the load that the uh, packaging is supposed to bear. Uh, apart from uh, the, the safety aspects like the migration limits, uh, migration of various uh, uh, bad elements uh, into, the, um, uh, in, into the material that is being packaged, and of course, uh, the deterioration of plastic uh, to UV exposure is a known fact. So you need to ensure uh, that uh, that way also uh, the material is sound and safe. So, so if you look at uh, the, the entire totality of the standards that we have and the, in the context of where we stand in terms of uh, toys, uh, in, in terms of uh, compliance uh, that is required, and in terms of uh, ensuring uh, sustainable and environmentally material use, uh, I think uh, we are at the crossroads where we need to uh, sort of chop a path, uh, particularly because uh, the toys uh, itself have uh, come under uh, uh, a compliance regime uh, where uh, compliance to the Indian standards have been made mandatory by the government. So uh, we also need to work out uh, ways and means whereby we ensure that packaging material also uh, is, is sort of uh, uh, if not mandatorily complying with the standard, uh, you have a very defined uh, 
uh, set of requirements uh, that get addressed uh, through the standards so that uh, it, it helps uh, not only the, 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 the packaging material manufacturers or the packaging manufacturers, but also the toy manufacturers to decide on what could be the uh, right quality of packaging uh, that we need to have in place uh, so that we are able to provide uh, the packaging solutions uh, with, the, with the intended purpose, uh, one, uh, in, in terms of uh, providing uh, uh, protection uh, and, and in, in terms of uh, preservation of the toy which is being used uh, and, and of course uh, uh, using uh, effectively uh, the, the packaging uh, in terms of its aesthetics and its uh, marketing ability and branding ability. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chaudhary, for sharing your thoughts on the, on the standardization as well as the compliances, which are very much important in this sector. So I think now we still have another 10 minutes left. So we have a few questions, which I'll take it up uh, on behalf of the audience. So Mr. Chaudhary, the, what is the significance of standards in the packaging of toys? So you have covered, but still, if you can briefly touch upon this part. Yeah. Uh, uh, see. I view that uh, packaging is a part of the product itself uh, when we are talking of toys. Uh, so, so from the uh, toy manufacturer, uh, it is very important that, uh, uh, that we have the right standards in place, uh, which the toy manufacturer knows, uh, which he can sort of ask uh, his supplier of the packaging material to confirm to. So, uh, so for the toy manufacturer, it's very important that we set the right standards, the right requirements in place, and he is able to decide on, uh, uh, I mean, what sort of material he used to procure and what sort of material he has to use. Simultaneously, the standard would also help uh, the uh, packaging uh, manufacturer uh, to sort of ensure that he is able to comply with the requirements uh, which are highlighted. One, uh, it is it is a safe uh, packaging material. Two, it is a packaging material which is able to uh, So, so both ways, uh, I think uh, standards is going to play a very important role. And as I mentioned again, that uh, when we are talking of ensuring a, 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 a regime of compliance, uh, that is the first thing which we need if we have to ensure compliance. Comply against what? So you need standards uh, which would specify the requirements against which you would assess the compliance. So, so uh, that is why standards, uh, the, the significance of standards lies there. And not to forget the consumer. The consumer here again is the child. And, and uh, whatever is associated with the child, uh, we have to be very, uh, very particular about, very, very particular in terms of uh, the compliance of such uh, products and items uh, to the requirements uh, of, of the standard. So I think all in all, if you look at uh, the, 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 the three categories of stakeholders that uh, packaging uh, of toys would going to address, one, the child uh, as the consumer, the second, the packaging manufacturer, and third, the toy manufacturer, I think uh, the, the significance of the standard is uh, undoubtable. So just in continuation to this, is there any intent to develop toy specific packaging standards? If so, how will this be done? As I mentioned that I think uh, uh, since we have uh, a large number of packaging material standards, uh, in certain aspects, I think we may have to look into uh, having specific requirements for toy packaging uh, in place. And that could be as part of the uh, existing material standards, or we could have uh, separate standards for toy packaging, or else so we can have the packaging uh, component of the requirements built in the specifications of, of toys. Uh, so, uh, it could be approached in different ways. Uh, the, the decision has to be taken by the stakeholders themselves because, uh, uh, as you may be aware, the standards are made uh, through a consultative process where we have on board all these stakeholders uh, and, and they sit and decide and deliberate on, uh, on, on how to go about uh, the job of uh, defining requirements. Uh, so, though we don't have a specific uh, sort of a, uh, a plan of uh, making standards, but I think uh, this is something which we need to deliberate in the in the relevant technical committees in BIS, uh, where we have this all the stakeholders on board and try to work out uh, uh, how, how we go about this work. But definitely, uh, uh, to me, uh, uh, sooner or later, we'll have to look into a compliance regime uh, coming in place. Uh, so I think uh, standards uh, has to come uh, at the earliest. 
Thank you, sir. And uh, last question for you. How can one access information on standard relevance to packaging? Uh, any information on standards uh, can be accessed uh, from our website, uh, which is uh, www.bis.gov.in. Uh, uh, but then we also have a, a e portal, um, uh, which we call as ETIS, and the link to that is uh, manakonline um, uh, dot in. Uh, so if you type manakonline dot in. Uh, it will take you to, to the e-portal and under standardization, uh, you can uh, sort of uh, have access to all information about standards. Uh, you can uh, sort of uh, uh, find out uh, what are your relevant standards uh, by, a, by search mechanism. You can search uh, um, by typing the uh, highest number if you have, uh, by typing a keyword, uh, maybe the title or the name of the product uh, which you think uh, uh, it has. Uh, or you can also uh, sort of, uh, uh, I mean, search a standard through classification and subclassification, sub subclassification uh, categories. So, so there are various mechanisms through which you can search a standard. Uh, not only that, uh, you can access the entire document. I mean, any indigenous standard is now available uh, and downloadable, free of cost. Uh, so uh, you can have have those standards, access those standards. If you want, you can view them. If you want, you can download them. Uh, and, and so the entire information is available with you. Uh, not only that, you can have information on what are the standards which are in process of uh, development or subjects uh, which are being contemplated for being developed into a standard. Uh, you can have the draft standards also on the, on the site. You can have access to that. Anyone can uh, sort of uh, examine that. They can uh, comment on those uh, standards. The comments can be made uh, online uh, against those draft standards. Uh, if you want to submit uh, a requirement that a standard has to change or a new standard has to develop, you can make your proposal online. So all in all, everything is uh, at your fingertips. Uh, only thing is that you have to access the uh, BIS uh, e-portal, which is manakonline.in uh, through this link. And uh, you have uh, uh, the whole lot of information and a whole lot of opportunities to contribute to standards and get involved in standards making. Thank you very much, Mr. Chaudhary. Just to uh, take a clue from what you just mentioned, I would like to take this opportunity to tell each everyone that uh, from PhD Chamber of Commerce, we have also now an expert committee on toy sector, which we are working very closely with the Toy Association of India. So we will be uh, getting in touch with you, sir, so that we can have uh, training programs and sessions, which we can take to the clusters for the standardization part. And Preetiji, we would like to have your inputs also into that, so that we can work together on that part. So uh, uh, just I mean, just when you mentioned up, when you mentioned up training, I think it is going to be very important that we build the capacity of the industry also in terms of interpreting standards, in terms of uh, testing uh, products. So I think uh, all of us together have to work. Uh, I mean, the institutes, uh, the industry associations, uh, and uh, of course uh, we as a standards body. Uh, we have a training institute also which can provide uh, such trainings, which is providing uh, such trainings to the MSMEs. Um, and, and, and so we can extend this to the toy industry also. And I think that is going to be very important if we, uh, if we aim to achieve uh, that and, uh, and, and, and whatever, the, the, I mean, uh, going global. So, so anything, uh, I think uh, everything has to be backed uh, uh, through that appropriate training and capacity building initiatives. Sure, sir. So the, the, the definitely, sir, we'll work very closely with you on that part. So coming to you, Dr. Alam, so as you have touched so many points already, but uh, specific questions to, to you are, what steps IIP has taken for upliftment for toy packaging, basically? Very briefly, if you can touch upon that part. Sir, you need to unmute, sir. Already I mentioned, already for last three months, we are working for the package design and development uh, for the different toys category. Already we have started from Varanasi. We have uh, started the cluster-based uh, research uh, of the twice of the Chitrakoot. So these are the wooden-based twice. We have also taken five different categories of the twice. The, the, we have uh, what I have shown more than 10 packaging specification we have developed. One part. Another part, rightly said by the uh, DG, uh, we have to give the training. Ultimately, who will be the user? If you have to develop a packaging, and uh, the the user can, if they don't have a knowledge about the packaging, even somewhere we have experience, 
uh, we uh, of the during the training program we have observed they didn't even know about the packaging they used to wrap the product on newspaper or something in local so so the, that is the not the right way of the packaging ultimately we have to train them what is the packaging how the packaging will improve their product how it will help in marketing how from where they will get the right type of the packaging material even we are also giving the training and uh, uh, skilling that uh, with the help of their uh, own product from their own resources they can develop a packaging rightly madam said that okay, we have to utilize the natural resources locally available resources that is another focused area and uh, another uh, area what i could how the packaging is a part of a uh, uh, try experience because we want to make it the packaging itself will be a will work as a try so such type of the packaging we are also focusing and uh, already we uh, we have started the training already that was the what we can say ki basic part packaging development part we have work started we have developed packaging by the simultaneously we are doing the training even this program we have already organized different uh, segments and now another plan is that we have to reach out the cluster base we have identified different cluster of the packaging uh, or the try segment will will reach out there and then will give the training regarding special with the packaging and uh, of course rightly uh, um, mention bother we need have a, a, a broad packaging specification focusing for the twice so bis will take a lead in this matter what do we yeah, definitely about? i think dr alam you very rightly pointed out that training has to be done the skill yes. development uh, in the twice sectors i think which you have already started so yes, that sir. has to be taken to a different level altogether yes, so sir. that they can be taught that how they can enhance their products as well as the marketing of those products sure, sure. so thank you very much sir so now i come to ms preeti that uh, how does packaging impact saleability of the products and toys so we would like to have your view on that right okay this is a very basic thing in terms how do you sell a product you know a product that's lying on a shelf for any of these e-commerce uh, websites that are there that we tend to pick up given in this digital era that we are in I think the packaging has to sell itself. If I have, if I may say that, according to me, there are three main components. One is the messaging. Second would be the design of the packaging itself, and third uh, would be the whole presentation of the box or the visual appeal that's there on the box. Let's say. Now, of course, a lot of these are interwoven as well. Now, if you look at in totality, what does packaging do? You know, it enhances the saleability of the product. Is apart from the thing of the safety to protect the toy etc that's there you know in terms of it but it also helps you differentiate the product from a competitor also and when you look at two there will be two motorbikes so why is it that a child picks only one you know in terms and that has a greater impact on consumers in, in terms so if you look at messaging so for me these are the three things so messaging if i may have to dwell on it a bit deeper you if you pick a product you generally want to know what is that product about it the product the packaging should convey that message very clearly what is it about is it numeracy it is literacy is is it trying to you know build up what is it trying to do now if it doesn't talk about the product you give me a fancy product or box type and just give it doesn't talk in detail about the product you're losing out second you need to also clearly articulate what age group that is there in terms you know the contents very clearly what does it entail So also the quality details, certification, the safety details, also the new age thing that I talked about isn't also you know in terms of from sustainability perspective. You're seeing a lot of leading brands that are there, including in the infant category, who are predominantly using plastic, are now moving to using you know biodegradable stuff, and to such an extent that they're not just using the pulp and stuff. They've gone using sugar cane. Uh, I, I I would say you know uh, polypropylene. Uh, there's some material so looking at it the second element is the design now what happens today most is that come today a seed so it doesn't tell you know you don't get look and feel and children generally tend to enjoy the experience and therefore your product may be super but if your design is not you know it doesn't enhance the look and feel you've lost a customer again so therefore why it sounds very basic you know this is from a but this is very very important you have to have the visual design really active now because like i said the communication for kids in visual design 
much more. And lastly, you look at the presentation part. Overall, the whole package, the whole, how do I present that toy? Now, that has to start at the time of your designing your toy itself. It's not like I make a toy and then design the packaging. Many a times. Now, that's a flaw. The, the teams have to work in tandem here because it goes to what type of packaging do you want? Is this product to be seen, not to be seen? Most likely it's seen the product, it's transparent packing. You know, many a times you look at, you know, this you know, top is see-through in terms, or you look at stackable. So a person gets to know what the product is about. Now, if you look at, you have new things that are coming in, innovative ideas. And then the new thing is about the surprise toys, you know, in blind packaging. So where the packaging is really opaque. And this is a major trend globally and also picking India now. So I, I see this whole unboxing experience, the unpredictability, you know, is quite exciting for children. So they get those small uh, toys that come out of it. And it's, it's a good experience. It's a part of playing itself for the child. So apart from, like, like we say, good practices, you talk about, you know, in terms of natural packaging should be used, biodegradable, etc. Those there. Look at new varieties that are coming. Now, uh, you have something called as even the tube toys. Now, uh, we had uh, Mr. Chaudhary also talking about it. You know, those where you use tube toys, which is, a, you know, a fun making, uh, you know, you assemble the parts that are using, that are used in packaging itself. So if, for example, if I may say you're using a, a, a vehicle, so you'll have, instead of your traditional conventional toy, a wooden toy or a wooden, so this packaging material itself is made, the parts are made, and then you stick on those. So you have a, a tube, a cardboard tube, and, and then children enjoy the experience of making it. With stickers, etc. So the whole, they learn the experience, the assembling part. And this, the best part is this is completely recyclable in terms. And this definitely works cheaper on the hands as well. According to me, I think uh, the, these are the three main elements. Uh, of course, keeping in, in mind the, the safety standards, yes, the certifications. If they get this right, I think uh, the, the saleability is definitely there. You see a lot of the flexi ones that are coming. The leading brands, of course, recently I was uh, talking to one of them. And reduced their cost by almost 80%. They moved to you know, the flexi type of thing. The, the other aspect is that you have, you, because this category is a children's category, uh, they have cards, the flash cards. You need to look at, okay, it has to be in a, in a store, it, have, it has to be displayed in a manner that it can catch your eye, otherwise it just get lost. So you have to think on it of how do I put that, how do I peg it? So what kind of uh, materials I need to use? How do I display? That becomes the key part. So for me, I think these are the three uh, main points. Thank you, Pritiji. I think one more question to you was, how do you optimize on the costing part of packaging? Yeah, while there are many elements that go into it, I wouldn't dwell into the raw materials parts, uh, etc. that's there. But uh, so uh, at a broader level, if you look at optimizing the sizing, optimum sizing, uh, I mentioned this earlier as well, you know, in terms of, uh, of most of the companies, if you'd seen, you know, we're looking at those really big boxes, the perceived value of, of the box. So you now that adds to your cost in terms, most of the time. Now, so therefore, if you look at our costing, it can vary your packaging part. It can vary as high as 40, so anywhere between 20 to 40% of the total product itself. So how do you optimize this cost, keeping in mind the saleability, the sizing, the materials that used? So how many, from a production standpoint, if I'm a, how many colors do I look at? What kind of coating do I look at? What is the size of the paper? In terms, uh, now, if you look at paper, wastage, we should not have much wastage. Now, because when you look at sizing of the board or the paper, they come in standard sizes. And you have to fit your design into that. So to give you an example, if I look at a 20 by 40, uh, Kind of a you know a minimum size of a box uh, that's there and uh, paper that comes in and if my average size of a box is a uh, toy that comes is about 12 by 12. if if i just work on the maths it gives me a uh, i would say eight by four wastage now at one toy this is my i've wasted about eight inches and four inches can i look at it in terms of looking at my packaging and say can i make it into a 15 by same sum you know uh, same cost, more visual space, or can I get more products reducing it? So we need to look at or which are the ways. Now, like I said, flexi packing, which are reusable, 
they can open up. So there are new ways that are coming in there. Let's look at those options that are available. A lot of companies are now promoting, I mean, globally and in India have actually taken the stance of looking at, like I said, recycled, uh, recyclable uh, papers, in terms, not just paper, but products itself completely. So that's uh, broadly it, I think, from a commercial iteration, if you look at uh, it's how do I optimize my shelf cost? Because with the bigger boxes in terms, the, the logistics cost adds to it, the shelf space, because can I, someone has to think on it in terms. Now the same value, I care for the same value of the toy, I can have three instead of just one. Can I optimize that? Am I getting more in that? So we, we need to think on those lines, given the pressure price points that the, the, the companies, the manufacturers operate. So therefore, really, there's an intervening thing between these products points here. Thank you very much, Ms. Preeti. I think we have already surpassed our time. But we have one question, Dr. Alam, I think you have been already doing on that part. So you can uh, touch upon that briefly, that how packaging plays important role as an part of an overall toy experience. So kindly unmute, sir. Yeah, yeah. that already I have replied in earlier my uh, question. Uh, the toy is like, if we want to have a packaging so that uh, it will work as a toy. So, so the experience is that uh, pa packaging itself, the children, the kids will play with the packaging. For example, now you have experience a uh, very uh, common example I want to give this Kinder Joy. Why it, is, it has a, like a, every, every children wants Kinder Joy. When they enter, they, uh, they are uh, always asking mothers, please, I ne we need a Kinder Joy. Because inside of the, this small, uh, the, the chocolate, a different flavor of the chocolate is very small amount. But they have a um, fascination towards the, the small toys inside of that. So, so I want to now we have to have a packaging itself, uh, which experience as a toy to the children and kids. The design, uh, the, this, this is the innovation focus for the, uh, the yeah. for the especially toy segment. I think, thank you very much. I think the overall takeaway from this today's uh, interaction with you, three esteemed panelists, that there's a huge potential in this sector. A lot of training and handholding is required to bring those people who are unorganized and we have to reach out to them and give them the exposure, not only for the domestic as well as the international market. And sure. that is how we can uh, achieve the target of Art Nirbhar Bharat and go vocal for local. So I think uh, I would like to thank all three of you for sparing your time and sharing your views with us. And we look forward to have many more such interactions and training programs with three of you. So on behalf of Government of India and PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I thank you for sparing your time. Thank you. 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 Thank you.